Welcome back to BAS 120. We're on Chapter 7. We're doing examples 7.15 through 7.17. Uh, so up until now, we've talked about uh, comparing where we have two samples, and then we talked about where we had multiple sa samples for numerical data where we use the ANOVA tool. But what if we had multiple categ categorical data? For that, we're going to use a chi-squared test to see if we have statistical differences. Now, again, in business, you can see lots of applications. In this example, we're looking at whether uh, whether they're a male or a female impacts the type of brand of product they might buy. And we have several brands, in this case, three. But intuitively, I think it makes sense that you know age group may impact what kind of brands they buy, uh, gender might impact what kind of brands they buy. Very powerful to take this raw data and see, hey, is there a difference? Uh, does gender make a difference in the brand or age group? And again, we can use that data in our marketing campaigns to save money or who we send mailings to. You can see all, hopefully, all the implications that uh, a business can use to do this kind of statistical analysis. So here's our raw data. Again, we went to the energy drink survey and different energy drinks, different brand preferences based on uh, gender. And I just took this raw data and put it into a very simple pivot table, uh, which we all should be able to do. Um, I did some very simple uh, example brand one. If you look, you know, you do a very simple uh, calculation to see uh, males, 39% of them, 39% of the males like brand one, only 24% of the females like brand one. So, you know, just a simple test to see, well, maybe we might have some difference, but we really don't know yet. That's It, it looks interesting, but we really need to do some testing to find out what, if there is a difference. So, same type stuff, just a different test. Our null hypothesis is the categorical variables are independent, i.e. independent means that there, there's no impact to brand. They, they don't impact brand. Or our alternative is they are dependent. It does impact the brand. So here's the same pivot table. Now, this is going to be a little trickier. We're going to have to calculate, well, what percentage brand one for females did we expect to get? the expected frequency. Now to do that, it's a little, the formula, the equation's a little complicated and you have to, because of the, I've used the pivot table, but all it is, is I've taken the total number of females times the total number of brand one and divided by the grand total. So what's that thinking and what that's doing basically is that saying intuitively if there was, if there was no if I knew nothing else, I would say the total, I would expect for brand one females to be the total number of females times the total number of brand one divided by the grand total. And then you just do, and you can copy, you do the same uh, thing for brand two. Total number of females times the total number of brand two divided by the grand grand total. For grand three, total, total grand total females times the grand total brand three divided by the grand grand total. That gives us the expected values. And notice here, if I total them all up, I get right back to the 37 females and the 63 males. Okay, so there I've calculated the expected frequencies. What, it, what would I expect? Now, to calculate my test statistic, as you might think, we're going to say, well, okay, what did the raw data, well, here's the, here's the equation. FO stands for my observed frequency. What did I observe? And again, statistically, we're going to see how much does that observed frequency deviate from what I would expect. So in other words, if no females brought, bought brand one, that would be way different from what we would expect. We'd expect 12 females to buy brand one. Uh, and obviously, the farther the, the difference this is, the farther way our observed is from what our expected is, the more likely we have a, a, a dependency there. You know, females don't like brand one, perhaps. 
So down here we've calculated all of these. So this is just simply we observed nine females that liked brand one. We subtract that from what we expect. We expected 12.58. We square that, basically making it a positive number. And we divide by what we expected the frequency to kind of see, well, what percentage variance do we have? And we sum all of these up, which we've done down here. We've taken all of these, summed them all up, and we get a chi-test statistic of 6.49 rounded numbers. Now, just like we do with all other statistics, we've got to determine is that far enough away from what we would expect our critical chi-square. So just like with T's and with Z-scores and everything else, we went to Excel and said, Excel, give us the, the chi-INV at uh, uh, an alpha of 0.05 and tell us what that test statistic is or that critical value is. And it gave us to us right there, 5.99. Just like with all the other statistics, our test statistic is outside the range. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis. We're going to say, yes, gender does make a difference on what brand they pick. And then we can also calculate the p-value by just like we did the other use using the uh, chi-dist uh, equation. And we see our p-value is 0.03, which is less than our alpha. So again, that would tell us to reject the null hypothesis. So yes, brand is influenced by gender. I uh, hope that helps. Any questions, let me know.